Hello and welcome to another mod showcase. Today I'm going to talk about a few mods that add to your travels through Skyrim. This video isn't about graphics as I've already done that video recently and I intend on making a low budget version very soon. See the pinned comment for my progress. The mods in this video will however help add to your immersion in the world space. I've changed the skies, land, water and underground and even given a new reason to travel through each of these. I know I have a subscriber who likes to take strolls through Tamriel, so these should really suit you. If you'd like me to make a video like this for you, tell me what you love about Skyrim and I will try to build on it. And of course a subscribe never goes amiss. So with that being said though, let's begin. The first mod on my list is Real Wildlife by Nadeus. I have avoided this mod for such a long time assuming crashes could be a real issue here, but I've been massively surprised at not only how good it is, but how stable it is, having received zero crashes or even lag whilst using this mod. What Real Wildlife does is add in 490 new creature types to the leveled list. One of the ways this has been achieved is by adding in herds to the prey and hunter list. We now have horses running wild with their calves, farm life wandering as wild families, deers in different sizes and variants, newly sized and aged animals across the board. There are new giant species and trolls, wolves hunting in larger packs too. I really love the touch of having the adults of herds being more aggressive to protect the young. This mod has added so much to my travels that fast travel is just a boring thing to do now. I'm really enjoying the adventures. Even a simple walk feels like it has more merit. Alongside Hunterborn, this is easily the most immersed I've felt whilst randomly hunting through Tamriel. Especially with the new loot on offer, with ingredients and food making me feel like I'm wasting none of the animal. This mod also costs shockingly little, taking only 24.1 megabytes. And for all these reasons, it has to go on my highly recommended list. One thing of note is, when you come across cows and you shoot them, they have quite a propensity to fly massively high into the air. I tend to try and shoot them again, but that's just a fun game I have. Next up is a mod that's very similar. We have Splendor Dragon Variants. In a very similar vein, this mod adds in new species of dragon, from young to legendary and a whole bunch of newly named dragons in between. This affects each of the lines, by which I mean fire, blood, ice and anything else you can think of. By using this mod in the game, dragons increase from 14 vanilla spawns to 784, and each one is different to the last. Again, I've felt no lags using this mod, I haven't felt overwhelmed by dragons either. But it now feels like they're an actual problem, so thematically within the game, this feels extremely immersive. Because this mod uses vanilla assets with resizes, it actually works alongside mods that alter dragons, which includes textures, difficulty, as well as two extremely popular mods in talkative dragons and diverse dragons collection without a patch. You'd be forgiven for thinking, with all of the above, this mod would put a dent into the 5GB limit. But no, it costs only 346.6 kilobytes, and coupled with the above, makes Skyrim feel alive and populated. Next up is a mod called Skyrim Revisited All-in-One. The Revisited series expands upon some of those early game and story mission dungeons and turns them into a much larger and more difficult ordeal. Currently Bleak Falls Barrow, Ooston Grave, Embershard Mine, Steepfall Burrow, Halted Steam Camp and White River Watch have been given the Revisited treatment. I recently gave Bleak Falls a run through using this mod and it went from a 10 minute dungeon up to 30 minutes. The potential for exploration is huge as well, as this mod gives so many alternative routes to take in order to reach that finish line. Each of these new routes have been filled with enemies and work alongside spawning mods to create even more fun. Bear in mind most of these dungeons I have cleared more times than I care to remember, but with this installed it becomes so much less of a chore. Prepare yourself for getting lost in somewhere you could otherwise traverse blindfolded. Skyrim Revisited is also available in standalone files, not that you'd need to worry given the minuscule file size of just 901.1 kilobytes. I can again state I've had no issues with this mod, just be sure to install it on a new playthrough. My fourth mod is a choice of three. The first two are missives at 785.1 kilobytes and the notice board at 2.8 megabytes. Both of these mods feel the same purpose of giving out more bounties, similar to what you would get when asking for a job at an inn, but instead of asking at the inn, you check a board outside. There is very little to choose between these mods. They look and perform extremely similar. I tend to use missives as it allows me to drop the quest if I don't want to do it. However, this can annoy the townsfolk. Both of these offer a wide variety of jobs from hunting down an item, hostage or foe, and much, much more. 
They also offer skill leveling, perk points and of course gold for your services. The third option is called Bounty Perks, which is 18.8 kilobytes of a download. This performs a far smaller task, as it doesn't add anything to the world space or invent new bounties. However, it does make performing tasks for the Yarl much more worthwhile, and as such I thought it deserved a mention. It can be used alongside either as well, so in for a penny, in for a pound. My fifth and final mod adds to the livelihood of the oceans and lakes. Here we have Depths of Skyrim. An absolutely fantastic mod that has me exploring the underwater areas all across the world space. From scenes such as sunken ships, giant fossils and bones as well as tons of new underwater foliage and fish, this mod really has given us so much. We get new treasure spots and reasons to explore. This mod comes in at 126.9 megabytes, which feels like a lot, but with all that water in Skyrim, it felt almost wasted until now. This pairs really well with Sea of Spirits which adds in a bunch of new aquatic life for 20.1 megabytes. Included in this are Narwhal, Drow, Blue Whales, Orca and tons more which when combined with the 100 plus new fish from Depths of Skyrim makes the underwater so much less bland and blah. Both of these mods were ported over by Gentle Mittens who creates and ports in a ton of wildlife mods and is absolutely worth checking out. If you like what this video offers, you will absolutely love this mod author's page. And now for my quick fire suggestion section. My first suggestion is Bandit Camps by Skillist, which adds in a ton of new bandit camps to the world space and is extremely fun. These all work with radiant quests, however this mod can cause crashes around Cloverhenge, which as far as I can see is the only problem in an otherwise perfect mod. I am also a fan of the people of Skyrim Complete which is a huge undertaking, changing the entire face of the above ground world with new towns, camps, fortresses and scenes. Should this mod ever receive voice acting, it will without a doubt be the most popular mod around. Be sure to check the description before downloading, as such a large mod can conflict with a lot. However, I have built a load order around this and have no complaints, some of the best playthroughs I've ever had. I also love Easy Riders Dungeon Pack, which adds in 8 brand new dungeons to the game. These dungeons are incredibly large and will add hours of extra fun to your game. I want to straight up state, the difference between the suggestions and the main 5 is entirely down to conflicts. The top 5 all play with each other nicely whereas the suggestions will unfortunately conflict. So please read up on them before just downloading. And now for my usual sign out. I hope this has helped or given you ideas on how you can change up the world space and freshen up your game. If it has helped I really do appreciate likes, comments and of course subscriptions. I'm also going to be posting and pinning a loadout of high quality cheap mods that I would love to work on as a community. So look out for that and we can all make it and build our styles around it. But either way, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.